Hey guys, I'm by the pool um, and this pool is pretty cool because it shows the lake back there. And this is a 10 minute walk from the house. And here's Jonathan. Jonathan, how are you feeling? Good. How are you? Good. You're sprinting. Yep. <laughs> hey, Greg. Hey, Monty. Um, the pool that we have near our house overlooks a lake. So it's really nice and pretty. And here, there's also a little jacuzzi over there. Jacuzzi. And in the background, there's the mountains. So it's really nice here. It's really nice to just hang out by the pool and um, escape daily life. <laughs> and Jonathan is just chilling at the edge there. Hi, Jonathan. How are you? <laughs> Let me walk you guys to the edge. The edge of the pool overlooks a lake. And you can and there's some mountains. Way, 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 way. Um Oh yeah, I wanted to share with you an insight that I got because I spoke to um, uh, a gentleman <laughs> who is a not only a serial entrepreneur but a dad, and um, a dad, a full-time engineer, has five e-commerce companies and um oh maybe i can go into the jacuzzi now has five e-commerce companies is a full-time software engineer and has a lot of properties and so to me i'm like if that level of human can exist then what's your excuse but i dug it a bit deeper um, I asked him when he woke up, and he said he wakes up at um, he wakes up at 4 a.m. every morning. Okay, are you the type of human who can do that? <laughs> he doesn't watch like shows and things like that, and it makes me question my own choices in life um, because you know you choose specific activities to deem as things that you use to relax, right? Like for example, being in a jacuzzi in the middle of the day. Um, that's something that you can do to relax and, but there are other things that you don't do on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Like you don't, or maybe you do, but you choose to go watch Netflix for like, entire seasons on end and that's the choice that you make to relax like you have to or your favorite show or you consume all these things and then but while you're consuming them in the in the process of consumption you're you have this sinking feeling that you're not you know doing what will secure your future and um, I feel like while we're young, when we have the choices to intentionally choose to do certain things, um, why do we let ourselves use like, like mindless shows or just use mind numbing activities as the decision to relax, you know? While some people meditate and some people do other things, why do a lot of us use mind-numbing activities of shutting ourselves off? Um, 
And why do we let that be okay? I don't know. Um, hey, Wellington. Hey, Julie. Hey, Reg. So, hey, Julie. Um, come visit us. Our house is okay now. <laughs> it's not like a bunch of moving boxes. And also, let me show, Julie, let me show you the lake. So here's the jacuzzi. It sits right above a lake. The lake around us. And in the background, there's the mountains. There's also water fountains in the lake. Yeah, it's like a normal thing to do. Why do we accept that as the norm? I don't know. And if we do accept that as the norm, here's the thing, I accept that as the norm because a lot of people do. But when I speak to abnormal human beings who, um, you know, can be a full-time dad, can have a family, have a full-time job, and they can do activities that totally secure the future of their themselves and their family and their, you know, offspring and everything, I feel like for the most part, we do only enough to secure our income, but not enough to secure to the point where if you have some huge medical um, accident or some huge medical thing that sucks up a lot of your income, most Americans at least won't be able to survive that. So why are we okay still with doing just enough and then relaxing thinking we're doing enough because we're so in our super small circle that we don't realize that there's so much more out there that that is possible for us as a human being. Um, I don't know. I think it's because we're so isolated in our own world and the people around us are most of the time around our level and we're not going out there, we're not meeting these superhumans that we think are superhumans, but what if in their world that's the norm? And our lifetime is only long enough for us to not know that. Our lifetime is short. It's not long enough for us in our small circle to know that superhumans exist, but they're not so superhuman because they can be you, you know? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like we're definitely programmed to believe a certain way. And um, part of our programming could be that we, that our, the way that we're comfortable and the circle that we are in is so comfortable. We don't seek outside of it. We don't want to know outside of it. And our routine becomes so routine that um, we don't realize superhumans exist. It kind of reminds me of that movie, Glass, or whatever that movie is called. Um, yeah, that movie Glass, you know? Uh, it's like so many people live a certain way that you don't realize some humans can bend metal. But I feel like the equivalence of that, you don't realize that certain humans that are real human beings, that are flesh and blood, can have like seven businesses going, generating them income, securing their future, and that they're waking up at like 4 a.m. in the morning, that they're doing all these things. And we think it's crazy because it's so not a part of our world, you know? But anyways, that is why I decided to really go to Masterminds and pay the price of admission, the thousands of dollars that um, is asked to meet people on that level. Um, if I'm going to an event and everyone has to pay like $3,000 to come, then like the, thing that, the things that are taught might be valuable, but the people I'm meeting would probably be worth the price of admission. That's what I think. Did I step into the matrix? 
Leo Piero. Hey, Leo, I was talking about you. Um, I, I was talking about how because I actually, in an internet way, seek out individuals who are operating on another level, that I'm meeting people like you who are not normal. And so my norm in my world has shifted just because of uh, knowing the presence of some someone that can operate on your level. And, you know, when you say something like, oh, I wake up at 4 a.m., I hear that. I hear that somewhere and I hear people do that and I hear people um, not spend their time in a you know normal way but it's not until I think you meet people virtually or in the flesh and blood that that you realize the world that you're in is so small and that it can be very expanded mentally um, by meeting people who you think are superhuman so <laughs> that's what I believe but uh it's a beautiful day you guys look at this pool look at the jacuzzi Jonathan's in the jacuzzi and look at the lake around us in the mountains this is 10 minutes walk away from my house so we just walked here so you paid double for mastermind <laughs> no uh one mastermind I'm gonna hopefully go to is not double, it's like $3,000 for two days. But um, but yeah, I want to operate on a different level. If there's only one life to live, I want to live that expanded mental life. And the only way to do that is to stop playing small, right? Um, what do you think? Hopefully my... Hopefully my nipples aren't showing. That's what. I... Did Jonathan go to the mastermind too? No, um, the mastermind hasn't happened yet. Jonathan is just at the jacuzzi chilling. Look, that's what he's doing. <laughs> he's on his phone, just like how I'm on my phone. Um, it's so beautiful, you guys. It's such a beautiful day today, and to think California is so cool because two weeks ago. I was hiking in snow for, I think it was for 12 hours. I think it was longer than that, but um, it was like hiking in two feet of snow for hours on end up uh, a mountain that was 11,000 feet in elevation level. Um, so I didn't gain 11,000, I just went up to 11,000 feet. Um, <laughs> hey, Gregor. Uh, so, yeah, so I decided that you never know really how big your world can become if you don't invest to be among the people who are playing bigger. And, um, what is it? And so my interview today that I interviewed Leo uh, Piero, he is telling me that another reality exists and all these other people um, running their life on a different level are telling me that other realities exist and although I think to a lot of typical people my life is probably a different reality um, I still am part of, my world is still very small, you know, and it can be expanded a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow, 147 degrees in Sacramento, oh my god. Hey Gregor, Gregor actually did the hike with us to San Gorgonio, and he owns a, shout out to your store, he owns a outlet in Sacramento, a um, a uh, outdoors store in Sacramento. So if you need any outdoors equipment, hit him up because he's like the owner. And um, hey, Aaron. So when, yeah. So I feel like the only way in my life that I'm going to play on a bigger level is to pay the price of admission 
to bigger level events and to meet these superhumans that exist among us. <laughs> and then maybe in meeting them, you find out the reality that that you are superhuman too and that it's possible for you, you know? Maybe that's the crazy insight that we get. Hey, Dashin. Hey, Frank. Hey, Frank. Oh, Frank, this is a new place. It's a 10 minutes walk from here. And it's such a beautiful day. There are people in the jacuzzi. There's people in the pool. And this is a 10 minute walk away. Oh, guys, I started blogging today. Vlogging. So I'm going to have a brand new YouTube channel that just is my life. And um, maybe that's boring to some of you, but today, just today, I had a Chrome Boss meeting. I had a meeting with my co-authors for a book that I'm going to be a part of. Um, I have a meeting with a potential partner for Group Convert and uh, I, deb I debut more material for my Chrome Boss people. So today was pretty productive and it was really fun. And oh, and I got to meet, uh, you know, superhuman person who is a dad of two, um, a full-time engineer that's still working, um, a person who owns five e-commerce stores, and multiple real estate properties. And maybe in your world that's normal, but in my world I'm like, what the heck? How is that possible? And, um, and yeah, I'm probably going to go to a $3,000 mastermind if there's still sim seats left um, so that I could meet people who play on a bigger level. Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, I, yeah, Leo Piero is who I was talking about. But um, I hope my nipples are not showing. Uh, probably going to go and enjoy the day. But look at this view. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? So I feel like the next time I go to numb my mind of things like binge watch a bunch of shows or just feel like that should be normal, I'm probably going to consciously decide that I could play on a bigger level. And that doesn't have to be my normal. Who knows? Hey, what's up, Colton? Colton, how are you? How, I know that you know about me maybe through James. Smiley. <laughs> uh, hey, Jay. Hey, Dashin. You guys are so cool. Um, hanging out with me. I'm hoping this covers my nipples. Uh, all right, yeah, it does. Okay, good. <laughs> um, but, okay, that's all I had to say. It's a very nice, wonderful day today. Hopefully I'm covering up my nipples. Doing well. Yes, through James. James Smiley. Oh, you guys are in Florida? I might be in Florida for one of my partner's mastermind. I think in August or I forgot what day. But we're going to film some uh, videos for our joint course and um, there's gonna be people there. So maybe if you're in Florida too, then I will meet you, who knows? <laughs> okay, bye guys. Such a beautiful day. All right, bye. Enjoy the rest of your day. Oh, you're in Dallas. Okay, then I thought since James is in Florida, you are too but maybe I got it all wrong. <laughs> well, have fun in Texas. Uh, I will go live another time. Oh, who's your partner? My partner is Marcus Campbell. He's been an affiliate marketing person for 19 years. He's a partner for one of my courses. I have two. The course that he's partnered up with me in is Simple Tools, Big Profits. And that's the one we were supposed to launch in your group. 
but I think James got busy and you got busy with your book launch. I don't know, with his book launch. But well, we were supposed to do that <laughs> like a week ago or something. Uh, oh, James is in Dallas too? Oh, cool. Are you guys? I know I'm also a part of your world because um, J.R. Revis is a group convert partner. And um, it's a small world, isn't it? That J.R. Revis is in your world and James, all these people. Uh, oh, awesome. Yeah. Oh, yes, I sell courses. I need, oh, I, I will do a big launch of Simple Tools Big Profits, second launch. So I'm going to hit you up for that because we help people make monthly reoccurring income through simple softwares, through Chrome extensions and, you know, downloadables, simple tools. <laughs> J.R. Revis is your bestie. I met him very briefly at Funnel Hacking Live and then he became my group convert. One of my group convert partners. Is that random? Life is random. I know, super small world. Um, I sell courses, I also sell softwares. I have softwares out there, so. Oh, and I have a 30 day Chrome Bus challenge going on right now. So, uh, yeah, it's a bunch of cool things. Cool. <laughs> All right, well you guys, I hope you have a great evening. It's a wonderful day here. And uh, I started vlogging, so I'm gonna put it on my YouTube channel. Um, and it's just my life, but whatever. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna be an interesting ride. I got to propose on stage Funnel Hacking Live 2018. Oh yeah, I think I heard about that. That is so cool. Well, I will definitely see you at Funnel Hacking Live the next one. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a great day. Bye, Shay. Bye, Greg. Bye, everyone. Oh, yeah. If you like that video, then you will love all the resources that I have over at kimcdang.com. That is K-I-M-C-D-A-N-G.com. There you will find all my courses, my extensions, all the offers that um, I have, as well as a lot of free resources if you are just getting started.